Someone behind me shouted loudly. <laughs> I Definitely got Corona, bro. Chill What's going on, guys? How's it going? Uh, welcome to part four of the 12 horror stories animated. I know you guys been waiting for it for a few hours. I know it's been a minute, uh, but low key, Miko kind of got me shook a little bit, so I have to give it a minute. But we're back. This is what we're doing. Let's continue this. Right. Mm, hold up. Right now. My parking lot nightmare. Let's see what this is all about. It happened on a Friday night. Oh, yeah? When I came home from work, I texted my friends and told them to grab a drink with me. But they didn't feel like doing anything this weekend. I'm 24, and all my friends started working, too. So I understand that they wanted to stay at home, be cozy, and just relax. Sure. I was not home alone it. at the time, sitting all by myself. And then something just came to my mind. I just wanted to drive somewhere. So I got in the car again and drove for a while. Then I tried to find a spot to park my car to have a smoke. Oh. There was an underground parking lot Wait, that was placed in a one-way street. It was around 11.30 p.m. Even though it was a big city, there wasn't much activity around this area. After smoking, I walked back to the parking lot through the dark, small streets. When I was getting anxious and thought to myself, Bro, what if someone is following me? Literally I'm out here all alone. So I turned up the pace and reached the parking lot. There was nobody at the parking lot, so I was relieved. Wait, why is he at a but at that very moment, someone behind me shouted loudly. <laughs> Definitely got Corona, the bro. Chill out. Back of my head stood up. <laughs> I slowly turned around, and there was this huge guy in a hoodie. He came to me and started talking. He was talking about how he just came out of prison, and that his wife changed the locks on the doors. I noticed that his right hand was in the pocket of his hoodie. I swear I saw the outline of an object in that pocket. I immediately thought it was a knife. Crap, this is not supposed to happen. I'm gonna die in here, I thought to myself. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yo, this is it. <laughs> voice, and I told him very politely that I had to run the graveyard shift at work so that I could leave. And that was when his voice started to change. He angrily said, no, you have to help me. I reached in my pocket and took out $30. That was the only money I had on me, and I just handed it to him. He took the money, but became angrier and shouted, Hey, man, is this the only money you've brought? <laughs> he took another step and it was much closer to him. Oh, no. But what happened next was a miracle. He got a loud shot. sound came oh. from a door that was shut outside the parking lot. He got distracted and turned his head around. And that is when I rushed to the elevators. It was a separate room, which was only accessible to people who parked their cars there, because the door could only be opened with the parking receipt. I got into the elevator safely, but then I heard his loud oh, voice behind home, bro. me. I ran to my car. I told his boy to start quarantine, bro. I slowly pulled up to the gate, and it opened. Although I could see the guy charging Damn, at me when I tried to get out of the parking lot, it was too late for him. I stepped on the gas and drove away as fast as I could, and it only took me 15 minutes because I was using too much gas. To this day. I can't stop thinking about what would have happened if that door outside the parking lot wouldn't have made that loud noise. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Someone broke into my house while I was, had a sleepover at my friend's house. Damn. My name is Cam. <laughs> Yo, he looked Four like a simp, bro. No years. cap. <laughs> I used to live across the street from my friend Eric. Oh. One Saturday. My parents Lambo. were going away for a night. But I didn't Yo, this man's rich, bro. Told like, like, dude, hey, a lamp was a two-seater either house. way. We ordered pizza. I spent the night playing video games and watched a few movies. I'm not sure what time it was. It was pretty late, probably around one in the morning, I think. Man, that ain't late. I was flicking through Eric's PlayStation games when Eric said, I thought your parents were going away for the night. I said, yeah, they are. But there's someone in the house, Eric said. Confused, I got up and looked out the window Damn. where Eric was looking. And there was a light on. And someone was like walking zombie. around in one of the rooms. Eric asked me who that could be. Who that? I told him I had no idea. My parents were out of town for the night. And we never had anyone come over by our house unannounced, especially at this time of night. 
Instead of waking Eric's parents or trying to call the police, we came up with this idea to sneak out and investigate who was in my house. They woke up though. Looking mm. back, this was the dumbest thing I ever did. But we were just young boys. We grabbed a couple of flashlights, snuck out of Eric's hit. back door, and headed over to my house. We didn't even think of how we would get in. But we didn't need to because the front door had been forced open. Upon entering the house, we saw there were damp, muddy footprints leading upstairs. I'm not sure if whoever was inside heard us, but we started following the footprints and one of the lights turned off. Oh, shit. At this point, I was getting afraid and I told Eric, we should just leave and tell someone. Eric proceeded upstairs, however. Come on, Eric. I didn't follow him up. I kept whispering to him. Oh, Eric, no, you green, bro. Don't leave your boy go. behind. He ignored me and continued going up. He walked into one of the rooms and I lost sight of him. I then bravely went upstairs to see where he went. I walked into my bedroom and a foul odor hit me in the face. I kept whispering Eric's name, but he wouldn't answer. Then I heard something. <laughs> it sounded like sobbing. Oh, I was scanning the room with my flashlight. In one of the corners of the room, I could see Eric's shoes. Oh, I raised no. the flashlight and I saw a disgusting, dirty hand that was covered in cuts and dirt covering Eric's mouth. Wait, what? Why the next thing on? I saw would haunt me for the rest of my life. I raised the flashlight once more and the person covering Eric's mouth was a man who had massive grin on his face, a vile beard and long, nah, straight, bro. black and gray, greasy hair. He got no the way weapon, he was though, staring at me him. traumatized me. His eyes were wide and filled with rage. I screamed as loud as I could and ran out the bedroom. The man proceeded to chase me down the stairs and out the house. I thought I was going to die. Thankfully, when he ran outside, there was a police car pulling into the driveway. Someone had phoned the police when they saw flashlights and someone wandering around the house. The man saw the police and ran off. As he, he ran, there were things dropping out of his pocket, screwdrivers, a few other small tools, and one object that fell out. However, was it wasn't building a tool. something. It was a long, rusty, dirty blade. Thankfully, the man was found and arrested. Eric was unharmed, and so was Damn, I. Bro, poor Eric, the scary bro. thing was, the man didn't seem to have taken anything. So that suggests his interests were much, much For more real, he wanted to catch a few Eric bodies. and I remained best friends. But he, nor I, will ever forget this terrifying experience. <laughs> Shit.